The story of the man with 6,000 demons, known as the Gerasene Demoniac, is one of the most striking accounts of demonic possession in the Bible. Found in Mark 5, verses 1 to 20 and Luke 8, verses 26 to 39, this narrative reveals the immense power of Jesus over the spiritual realm and offers a sobering reminder that demons are real and active. When Jesus and his disciples arrived in the region, they encountered a man who lived among the tombs. He was uncontrollable, breaking chains and harming himself. The Bible reveals that he was possessed by a legion of demons. A Roman legion typically consisted of about 6,000 soldiers, implying that this man was inhabited by a multitude of evil spirits. These demons drove him to isolation, self-destruction, and torment, highlighting the devastating impact of demonic influence. The concept of 6,000 demons inhabiting one person may seem overwhelming, but it demonstrates the spiritual capacity of human beings. The Bible does not describe human beings as limited in the number of demon spirits they can house. Today, many Christians live in what could be described as a la, la land, denying or downplaying the reality of spiritual warfare. While our modern world often dismisses demonic activity as superstition, the Bible is clear that demons are real and active. And I remember hearing about a lady who was demon-possessed. And her account really caught my attention because she stated that she was demon-oppressed and didn't even know it. The manifestation of the demons only started in her life the day she began going to church. The very night she first attended church, she began to hear footsteps in her house and experienced very uncontrollable sleep paralysis. The strange thing is that these manifestations had never happened before she started going to church. It was almost as if she had been coexisting with these evil spirits, and the fact that she started attending church bothered them. These strange events, like hearing footsteps, would only happen on the days she went to church. She would feel an evil presence, as if she were not alone. Eventually, as soon as she was born again, these supernatural events stopped. The account of this lady who experienced demonic oppression is both that intriguing and sobering. Her testimony highlights a reality that is often overlooked. Many people live under the influence of demonic spirits without even realizing it. What struck me about her story was how the manifestations of these demons began only after she started attending church, as though her newfound pursuit of God disturbed the spirits that had long coexisted with her unnoticed. She recounted that before her first visit to church, she lived what seemed to be a normal life. She wasn't aware of any spiritual disturbances or unusual activity in her home or life. However, the night following her initial church attendance, everything changed. That evening she experienced an uncontrollable episode of sleep paralysis, during which she felt completely immobilized and overwhelmed by a malevolent presence. She also began to hear disembodied footsteps in her house, often late at night which terrified her. These events were not random. They only occurred on the days she attended church. The unsettling aspect of her story is that these manifestations had been dormant before her church involvement. It was almost as if the demons had been content to remain hidden as long as she was not pursuing God. This is a stark reminder that the spiritual realm is real and active even if it operates subtly or invisibly for a time. Her decision to seek God and attend church clearly agitated the spirits that had long influenced her life. They seemed to react to her efforts to draw closer to God, revealing their presence through frightening and oppressive experiences. It seems that something is lacking in today's churches. Certain topics are often avoided from the pulpit, such as demons and demonology. The truth is, 
Demons are undeniably real. They have existed for ages, and their reality persists. We must recognize that these demons want us to believe they are non-existent or mere myths, as it allows them to continue their malevolent work against Christians. It is disheartening that even though Christians have read about Jesus casting out demons from people's lives in the Bible, some still refuse to believe in their existence. Nowadays, if a preacher dares to speak about demons, they are quickly labeled as fear mongers. I find this rather perplexing, considering that Jesus himself preached about demons and demonic activity. The Bible addresses the subject of demons and their activities, and Jesus taught his disciples about them, as seen in Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 through 45. Jesus did not shy away from this topic, and neither should we. Throughout the Bible, we witness numerous accounts of Jesus confronting and casting out demonic spirits in various towns. Jesus did not ignore or deny the existence of demons, and neither should we. I would like to share a testimony with you about a young lady who used to attend my church and her journey to knowing the Lord. She grew up in a family that did not follow Jesus or any faith, but they held certain superstitious beliefs. As she entered adulthood, she became involved with a new group of friends. Unbeknownst to her, these friends practiced various forms of idolatry and Eastern spells. Her bond with this group deepened, and one night during a camping trip with them, her friends initiated a ritual. Although she felt uneasy, peer pressure led her to reluctantly participate. While they were gathered in the wilderness, a fire burning in the center, an unexpected event occurred. She suddenly found herself frozen in place, witnessing the arrival of more individuals in hooded capes carrying fire lanterns. Their faces were obscured, and she was unable to move or look away. As they chanted unfamiliar words, she felt a presence entering her. At that time, she was unaware of its nature, but she now recognizes it as an unclean evil spirit. From that moment onward, she began experiencing reoccurring nightmares or visions. In these dreams, she would walk through a corridor at night, encountering shadowy figures extending from the walls, attempting to pull her inside. She would often wake up in different rooms of her house, realizing she had been sleepwalking. After enduring these struggles for years, she decided to seek help from a church. Miraculously, on the very day she accepted salvation, the nightmares and visions abruptly ceased. I share this story to highlight the fact that many individuals have genuine encounters with evil spirits. It is evident that there is a growing prevalence of demonic activity in our world as more and more people are coming forward with reports of strange sightings. Even mainstream interest in paranormal phenomena and sightings is on the rise. Throughout my years in ministry and dealing with the realm of demonology, I have learned a valuable lesson when facing demons. They despise Jesus. Engage in abundant worship of Jesus through singing songs, listening to sermons focused on Him, and immersing yourself in Bible verses about Him. When confronted with a demonic attack, do not rely solely on human assistance. Instead, turn to Jesus. For it is in turning to Jesus that demons will flee from your presence. They fear Him. They fear Jesus. Turn to Jesus. I have known of unbelievers who have struggled under demonic oppression, and they have gone to church seeking help and those churches have turned them away. Out of fear, rather than helping the person, they have turned them away. In this world, we are witnessing numerous strange occurrences, indicative of an ongoing battle between good and evil. As we navigate this world, we should remain vigilant and discerning. The reality of evil spirits should not be dismissed or taken lightly. Instead, we should equip ourselves with spiritual discernment, relying on the power of prayer and the authority granted to us by God. Through our faith and dependence on Him, we can actively participate in the spiritual battle, standing firm against the schemes of the enemy. Let us remember that our prayers, even when silently uttered, possess the ability to create an environment hostile to the enemy's work, ultimately contributing to the victory of light over darkness. If you truly believe that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, if you genuinely trust in the accuracy of the gospel records, how can you deny the reality of demons? There is an unmistakable devil and a formidable army of demons. You cannot effectively combat an enemy whose existence you refuse to acknowledge. The truth is, the devil and his demons 
do not overlook your existence. They know precisely who you are. Once, a preacher made a profound statement, quote, I believe that when you come to know the Lord, you also come to know the devil. If someone claims they have never encountered the devil or had any experience with him, I honestly question the depth of their relationship with the Lord. As I have mentioned before, the devil is not confined to hell. He resides in one of the heavens. Our struggle is not against the forces of evil in hellish places, but in the heavenly realms. That's where they exist." End quote. What a profound statement, indeed. It contradicts the popular belief perpetuated by the media, which portrays Satan and his army as residing in hell presently. However, according to the Bible, that depiction is incorrect. The Bible informs us that the devil and his army roam this earth, actively seeking whom they may devour. The truth is that demons are aware of your existence. Do not let anyone tell you that demons have no knowledge of you and that only God knows you. Rest assured that these demons, at first sight, recognize you and know exactly who you are. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Various events occur around us. As children of God, we must understand that our battle is not against human beings. We should refrain from fighting people. Instead, we should focus on resisting the devil and his demons, for they are the ones we should combat and defeat. It is evident that the devil utilizes individuals to fulfill his purposes, as numerous examples in the Bible demonstrate. Now, let's delve deeper into the topic of why demons target humans. The answer is indeed simple. It is because we are created in God's image. Our very existence reflects the divine nature and reflects the immense love that God has for us. This love is immeasurable and incomprehensible, even after countless lifetimes of preaching about it. Demons are well aware of this truth. Their primary concern is not directed towards you as an individual. They remain indifferent to you personally. Their focus is on Almighty God Himself. Knowing that they cannot directly harm God, they aim their attacks towards us, the objects of God's affection. It is essential to understand that God's love for you surpasses His love for the world, regardless of its breathtaking beauty and magnificence. Even the resplendent stars adorning the night sky with all their celestial grandeur do not occupy a higher place in God's heart than you do. Humanity, in all its imperfections, represents the pinnacle of God's love. Yes, you, every individual, is the apex of God's love, the embodiment of His majestic affection 